All right, welcome to an inkdependence.com brief video review and water drop test. Today we have, uh, this is Salix from Roar and Klingner. This is a very cool ink. It's uh, one that I've had for quite a while. I've used up samples of it. I broke down and bought a whole bottle of it. Uh, these come in, uh, how big is this bottle? Uh, 50 mils. Uh, not super expensive. This is a pretty reasonably priced brand of ink. Uh, this is, uh, I got this from Anderson Pens, it turns out. And uh, these, um, this is an iron gall ink. And so a lot of people are kind of scared to use it, but uh, don't be. Modern iron gall inks are not going to eat your pens. Uh, this will be just fine. I've had it in pens for quite a long time and has not eaten anything. So uh, let's take a look at the review. And here it is. So uh, this is Salix, S-A-L-I-X, and actually I wrote this, view a this review a long time ago. So it's been sitting on this paper for quite a while, and it has changed colors. Uh, it does change colors, and I will, uh, I'll add in a, um, well, you'll see it right now, uh, <laughs> side by side of it changing colors over time. I had this sitting there for probably 15 minutes or so on the uh, sort of, you know, sped up fast forward type thing. So uh, you can see that it changes colors. Mostly you'll look at like when I put that little squiggle in that has the uh, you know fresh ink as opposed to the, the, the other. Um, I have this currently in this pen right here, which is a Custom 74. It's a medium nib. I think the medium nib on here is a pretty wide medium as opposed to you know a lot of uh, Japanese nibs will run a size small or something. I think this is, you know, a pretty large medium actually and it's a fairly wet pen but this uh, salix ink does a really good job with it it's actually the only uh ink that will work at all really in my vanishing point i i don't know uh, the other inks work fine but this one doesn't squeak uh it doesn't uh, it's not too wet it's not too dry it's kind of perfect so i really like it in that uh, that vanishing point so if you have a vanishing point and you don't love the way the nib runs uh check out salix because it might fix your problem for you uh this is a pretty dark blue uh once it gets cured uh, Iron Gall inks do change color over time, as you've just seen, and so when it goes down, it's a much brighter blue as opposed to now. So, just go ahead and let's see. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Let's do a writing test. So, fresh ink. There we go. I'll kind of give you a squiggle next to that darker ink below. So you can see that it changes color fairly dramatically. This is the same ink, same pen. Uh, so it changes the color quite a lot as it goes, which is neat. I think that's a neat effect, but do keep in mind you're going to end up with sort of a dusky dark blue and not that bright blue that you see when you first squiggle it down. So that will change over time. Um, uh, I think it might be just a little bit dry because it does control my, uh, my really wet nibs. Let me back this out again. There we go. I'm doing this in the light tent because it's uh, kind of the light's not good outside right now, so uh, I can't really see the screen very well. So I'm gonna kind of guess where it is. But uh, anyway, this is a uh, this is a cool ink, and I really like it a lot. So check this one out. Here it is next to a whole bunch of other inks of the blue variety. And you can see about when I actually wrote this review. If you go back and look at the reviews of these things, uh, some of these I haven't used in quite a while. So this is a nice little look back. Pilot Blue Black is a really nice blue black ink actually as well. I kind of forgot I have that. I have a bottle of it. I might have to try that out again. Faber Castell uh, Cobalt is cool. Pelican Sapphire. I don't remember if I actually ever reviewed that one. I should check that out. Shaver Blue Black, uh, which I totally forgot I had. Man, this is a walk down memory lane. Diamine Salamander, which is one of my favorite dark greens. Uh, Live Oak, which didn't work, too, work out too well. And Stipula Musk Green, which I think is very cool and kind of often overlooked. It's uh, like a tamer, greener version maybe of um, uh, RNK's uh, Alt Gold Grun, which people like a lot. Uh, there's the Ink Swatch. It's pretty cool looking. Let's see what it does with water. I have some idea. Iron gall inks are supposed to be pretty water fast, but I haven't actually tested it yet. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna hopefully not spray water everywhere like I did the last time I did this with this big needle. Come on. The plunger sticks a little bit, so I'm trying to do it slowly. Oh, come on, goodness. I don't want to blast ink or water everywhere. There we go, goodness. Need a little more silicone grease on this guy. All right, I'll set that aside. And as suspected, while this has been here for a while, and so it's not the uh, it's not a fresh water drop or anything, you can see just a skosh of movement here. Really, hardly anything. These iron gall inks are supposed to be very water fast. Um, so I do hear that eventually, like over the course of decades, they'll eat the paper they're sitting on. So don't write like you know letters to your future grandchildren or something on it. Um, there you go. There's a little bit came up, but not much. So it's nice and water resistant, but I do hear that it's, it will eventually eat paper. I don't know if that's true of these, uh, but it's certainly not a, 
you know, archival ink or anything like that. Um, all right, let's take a look at the uh, chromatography right quick. Get that out of the way. And here you go. This is what we end up with. My light tent needs to be bigger, I think. There we go. Uh, let's see. There we go. Now it's adjusted the brightness. And you can see that there's really not much movement at all. So obviously it started out here and just kind of moved up to here. Just nothing really much at all. So even just sort of uh, drawing on a little strip of coffee filters type stuff, it doesn't move. So uh, yeah, quick. Quick water resistance. This is good stuff. Also, it doesn't uh, bleed, feather, or spread. Let's see. Where is the tiny sample? It is here-ish. So... Uh, this is the one I did with the uh, vanishing point right here. You can see no bleed feathering or spreading. Let's go ahead and zoom in right quick. There you go. Uh, like I said, I think my nib is a little odd. Uh, it doesn't give me a nice sharp line. I like more of a crisp line, and this does, does, just doesn't do it. But uh, the, the, it's not the ink's fault. But you don't see any bleeding, feathering, or spreading. And this is also, this is right here is with the Custom 74. And like I said, it's a pretty large medium and fairly wet. But on the other side of the page, just no bleed feather or spread. So that would be this area right here. So just nothing, nothing showing through. So really stellar performance, I think, from this ink. Uh, and it's definitely one that I recommend fully. So go find yourself a bottle of uh, uh, R&K Salix. Um, at your favorite distributor, I obviously, I bought this one from Anderson Pens. This is not a sample. Uh, I just, I think I got this at a pen show. I was like, ah, finally, I see some Salix. I'm going to get it. So I did. So anyway, there you go. Uh, this has been uh, inkdependence.com. I'm Mike. This is Salix, and I will see you later. If you want to know how to contribute to the blog, please go to uh, www.patreon.com inkdependence to find out how you can help support us. And uh, I will see you later. Peace out.